Hey what's going on guys, Core X Designs here and welcome to another 3D Studio Max tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create some really cool looking particles in 3D Studio Max and using Film Effects and Krakatoa. So recently I uploaded a video on YouTube on uh, you know on, uh, on my first video simulation, my first particle simulations which is going to be this video. So this is what we're going to be trying to create in this in this two part video series. So let's go ahead and see what, what it is. So as you can see, we have some really looking cool um, random particles floating all around the place, and this is what we're going to be trying to creating. To, wait, this is what we're going to be trying to create. So, so as you can see in this clip, um, I have a teapot which actually converts into particles and then vanishes into space. So this is not something that we're going to be doing in this uh, two-part series, but I'll be creating a separate video for this in the future. So be sure to, you know, subscribe in order to have a look at that. So in our stead, we're, what we're gonna doing, what we're gonna be doing is something of this sort. So random particles floating all around the place. Okay, so in today's video, part one, we're gonna be using Fume Effects to create some simulations in 3D Studio Max, and in tomorrow's video, I'm gonna be doing rendering using Krakatoa. So we're gonna be first creating a particle source and then rendering it out using Krakatoa. So first thing that you need to do, that you need to do, is have stuff installed and in, uh, have 3ds Max ready for all this. So you need two softwares for this, of course, you're going to be needing Fume Effects and Krakatoa. Now both of them do not come with 3D Studio Max, you have to download them separately. So in here I've opened up two, the two websites that we're going to be needing. This is the Sydney Sadi uh, Fume Effects website. Or you can just go ahead and search on Google for, um, you know, Fume Effects download and, you know, get a, get a free copy of this. Um, like a demo, demo version or something. And then we're going to be using... Um, Krakatoa from here, but since we're not going to be using Krakatoa in this particular tutorial, I'm just going to skip over that and I'm going to be returning to that in part two of this video. Okay, enough talking on my part, let's get cracking. First thing that you're going to be notice, noticing is after you install everything, you're going to have an additional option called um, Fume Effects here. You can see this Fume Effects, click on that, and we have a single button that says Fume Effects here, and we can click on that, and let's go ahead and start to do some stuff. Okay, so before we actually create some stuff, we need to make sure we need to make a a box um, that's going to tell Max that all the particle stuff is going to happen inside this box. So let's go ahead and random, cre randomly create a box, just like you create a box in 3D Studio Max. It's as simple as that. Now, what this box tells 3D Studio Max is that all of the particle simulations and all the particles will stay inside this box. So whenever a particle goes outside this box, it automatically gets deleted. So make sure you make the box um, the, in the right way. I'm in the right dimension. So if you have a huge box, then you probably want to go ahead and do some small particle simulation in that. But what I do is I usually make a 300 by 300 by 300 box, and I also center this up at 0, 0, 0, 0. It's not This is not necessary, but I just like to do that. So as you can see, I have a big, big box, and I have plenty of room to work with. So you know, it's always better to make a huge box and then and then start working. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look at some of the parameters of this box here. We have the width, length, and height, which are pretty self-explanatory, the width, length, and height of this box. And then we have spacing. Now, this is this is kind of like a, a, a new concept for someone who's not used Fume Effects before. Now, what spacing is, it's like a measure of the quality of your particles. Now, the lower the spacing is, the better quality your particles are going to be, but of course, the render time is going to increase. And the higher the spacing is, the lower quality of particles you're going to get, but the render time is going to be really less. So low spacing is equal to high high render times and high quality, and a high spacing is equal to a low quality and a low render time. So that that just depends on your preference. I personally like to stick with the spacing of two because I think that works for me, and it's pretty and it, and a spacing of two is pretty much uh, pretty okay or something. For starting up uh, from a, for a beginner, beginner, so someone, someone like me. Okay, so before we start, I'd like to tell you that uh, I'm also very new to this fume effects and particle world. So um, forgive me if I'm not able to explain stuff correct uh, in uh, in a you know satisfying fashion, uh, satisfying uh, 
uh, way but uh, yeah so let uh, but I have experimented with it for one week so I'm guessing I can do some stuff with it <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and start to do some stuff here I'm gonna go ahead and click on this button that says open fume effects UI so as you can see we have the fume effects UI which looks pretty pretty um, confusing at first because there are a lot of tabs we have the general simulation work with a wave of turbulence which is something that I don't like to work with uh, I don't like to change then the render tab the illumination tab and the object slash source tab now before we actually start doing some simulations we're gonna be using a source to emit the particles so if you have if you have any experience in uh, particles in after effects or in any of the software you know that we need an emitter an emitter that emits particles for example in this tutorial in this uh, video you can see that this uh, you can see that there's this uh, you know pretty bright thing that moves around and creates the particle as you can see there's the bright thing so that's called an emitter and an emitter is just something that emits particles so let's go ahead and create an emitter so what we need what we're gonna do is go to our create panel Go to helpers and then go to mass effects. I'm sorry, not mass effects, fume effects, and create a simple source. Now, there are pretty, there are many types of sources here simple source, object source, and all of these. But for this particular tutorial, I'm going to stick with part simple source. So, I'm just going to go ahead and create a simple source anywhere in the scene. You can create it anywhere in the scene. Okay, just create a small looking source here. So, as you can see, that's there, there's a source now. Um, what an object source does is it is makes an object emit particles but we're going to be going that depth in the in later tutorials and not in this particular one in this one we're just going to be uh, sticking to a simple source so go ahead and select the box again and then click on this UI button again then in the object slash source tab click on this button that says pick object and pick this object and kaboom now this ob this um, the source will start emitting particles so if you go ahead and start to simulate this uh, you're gonna see a fire because the, the default of fume effects is a fire so what we're going to do is go ahead and click this button to say that opens up the preview window there we go and then click on this play button that starts the simulation so this might seem confusing at first but once you do it a couple of times you're gonna be getting pretty comfortable with this so I'm gonna click on this and you can see that we have a small fire building there and we have some smoke going on it all looks really really cool I mean this is this is a default fume effects and it really looks cool so if you try to scrub through the timeline now you can see the simulation and you can hit, even hit the play button right here to see the simulation in uh, in real in re real FPS now you can just go ahead and hit render and this is gonna render using V-Ray pretty cool so you create a fire without practically without even doing anything so that's the power of fume effects because the default thing is a fire and it looks really cool in my opinion so you cannot create this using after effects because these are 3d particles and just after effect just looks way way backwards when you start to compare 3d particles with actually with that at 2d particles okay so but we don't want this fire I mean if you might want that fire but we don't we are looking for something of this sort these um, uh, these weird looking clouds or something so what we're going to do is what we need the first thing to do is re remove this yellow thing in the middle now that's uh, because you know we don't need that so we go into our simulation tab move down and we uncheck simulate fuel what that will do is if you hit simulate now you're going to see that there is no white thing uh, orange thing in the middle so we just have the smoke there so we're definitely going in the right direction now what we need to do is um add some you know if you, if you look at this um, I'm sorry not this um, here we have whenever the uh, particles are emitted they immediately go in all sorts of directions and they have they create some chaos now we want that chaos because right now quite frankly there is no chaos and it hence it looks really really simple also one more thing is um, uh, the source is really small so let's go and try to increase the uh, size of the source don't don't use the scale to do it um, it's not the recommended way increase it using the diameter here so that way and then select the fume effects again now you see that this is not uh, this is not updated here because it does not update that way you have to re-simulate it so let's go ahead and start to re-simulate it you can see that this is this is a lot better now and it's creating some smoke there okay let's stop it let's stop it right now so as you can see we have some smoke coming out but as usual we want some turbulence in the smoke when it comes out so that is done using turbulence which is pretty self-explanatory 
So we increase the X turbulence. The X, Y, and Z turbulences are kind of linked. So if you increase one, the other two is going to increase as well. So I'm just going to take it to, I don't know, something like six or something. And let's go ahead and re-simulate this. So as you can see, we have some pretty cool looking turbulence now. And the render times have increased. Um, I mean, the simulation times have increased. But we're definitely get, getting somewhere. Okay. Now, in this uh, in this video, uh, we have the particle, we have the source kind of moving around the plate, like it goes from here to here, then all the way around, and that just makes it look really cool. So let's go ahead and try to accomplish that. So click anywhere else, and they and anywhere ex else except this box, and all of this is gonna vanish, which is pretty good, and pretty cool actually. So select the source, and I'm just gonna put it somewhere here. Um, I don't know, somewhere here maybe. And then I'm going to hit auto key. You can hit um, um, the auto key button here or N, which is a shortcut. And then make a key at frame number zero. Then go to, I don't know, frame 40 or something. And just go ahead and move this to some other location or something like this. So we have, then we go to frame number, um, I don't know, 70 or something. Doesn't really matter. Uh, just want to make some random movements. I'm just doing some random movements and then go to frame 100 and just go ahead and move it, I don't know, here maybe. So as you can see, we have created some random movements. If you go ahead and play, we have this random movement. Now, we can turn off auto key now and what, then when we go ahead and select this box again, few in fact things are going to open and as usual this will not be updated in this. We have to re-simulate it. So click on this play button and you're going to see that we get some pretty freaking awesome stuff going on. You can see that we have the turbulence as we have in this video, and it's really looking really cool. Okay, so we can work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for this to uh, finally go ahead and uh, simulate for the entire thing, and I'm gonna return when it's done. Okay, so as you can see, I'm at frame 54, 55 right now, and it's really taking a long time. So I'm just gonna stop the uh, simulation. I just take it while it'll stop as well. <laughs> okay, so one thing that I did miss out before you do the simulation is open up this, and uh, what we need to do is go into your FumeFX UI, and into in your general tab, you want to go down to output and take the exporting channels, click on set, and add a velocity channel to this. Now, why do we need a velocity velocity channel? Is because um, if you have, if you've seen like a Photoshop uh, thing, we have three channels, which is the red, green, and blue channel, and we also have an alpha channel. So what what those are is those channels actually mix together to create the final image. In the same way, in FilmFX, we need a velocity channel because when we try to render it out using Fractoa in the next video, um, we're going to be needing this velocity information to create those particles because the particles need to know with, 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 with what velocity they need to go because we're going to be creating that using the film effects simulation that we just did. And also we need velocity for the motion blur effects for some, for some sorts um, because uh, as you can see we have this here. So just make sure you add the velocity channel here and hit OK and then do the simulation otherwise you're going to run into problems in the next video. Okay, okay. So as you can see I've hit it to frame number 55 but you might want to do it all the way till frame number 100. Now, now the reason you see this uh, this fire at uh, at frame 57 and 56 is because um, uh, how do I explain it to you? It's like a clipboard um, because the the new simulation replaced all the frames till frame number 56, but the older simulation, the original one, is still there from uh, 56 to 70 or something, and so it's showing up that way. So as you can see in this tutorial, we learned how to simulate this. So you can go ahead and do this for all of this, all of the. Uh, um, frames and okay so I think this is pretty much done for this part of the video because the next part is going to be particle creation and rendering uh, so I'm going to do it in part two but you can go ahead and go over some of the settings here you can change the gravity the vorticity I have no idea what this means but uh, this makes things uh, sort of cool I have no idea how I and we can change and you can play with the turbulence noise scale so if you go ahead and increase the scale to some a decrease the scale to like 15 you're gonna have more noise, or and else, and hence more, uh, more, uh, um, I don't know, what do you call it, more movement or something. But I just like to keep it 20 because it's, it's kind of like cool. And then we can move down and have some stuff and play, play around with all this stuff. No, now don't worry about the color right now. Uh, we're gonna be doing that later on. 
so yeah in part two of the video which is going to be uploaded today only or maybe tomorrow I'm not sure uh, we're going to be creating some particles based on the simulation based on the film effect simulation that we just did so that's going to be part two and we're going to be rendering that out using Krakatoa which is a renderer so thanks for watching everyone thanks for watching part one and uh, be sure to hit that like button down below if you like the video and check out part two and uh, yeah if you really like the video go ahead and subscribe to my channel to be notified whenever I upload new videos and uh, yeah, thanks for watching everyone and have a nice day.